Here is chapter 6, part 2, and I am on page 42. Chapter 6, Summer Days The early summer days on a farm are the happiest and fairest days of the year. Lilacs bloom and make the air sweet, and then fade. Apple blossoms come with the lilacs, and the bees visit around among the apple trees. The days grow warm and soft. School ends, and children have to play and to fish for trouts in the brook. Avery often brought a trout home in his pocket, warm and stiff, and ready to be fried for supper. Now that school was over, Fern visited the barn almost every day to sit quietly on her stool. The animals treated her as an equal. The sheep lay calmly at her feet. Around the 1st of July, the workhorses were hitched to the mowing machine, and Mr. Zuckerman climbed into the seat and drove into the field. All morning you could hear the rattle of the machine as it went round and round, while the tall grass fell down behind the cutter and long green swaths. So they're in this giant lawn mower. Next day, if there was no thunder shower, all hands would, would help rake and pitch and load, and the hay would be hauled to the barn in the high hay wagon, with Fern and Avery riding at the top of the load. The, then the hay would be hoisted, sweet and warm, into the big, big loft until the whole barn seemed like a wonderful bed of timothy and clover. It was fine to jump in, and perfect to hide in, and sometimes Avery would, would find a little grass snake in the hay and would add it to the other things in his pocket. Early summer days are a jubilee time for birds. In the fields, around the house, in the barn, in the woods, in the swamp, everywhere, love and songs and nests and eggs. From the edge of the woods, the white-throated sparrow, which must come all the way from Boston, calls, Oh, Peabody, Peabody, Peabody! And on an apple bough, an apple bough, the Phoebe teeters and wags, oh, the, on the apple bough, the Phoebe teeters and wags its tail and says, Phoebe, Phoebe! The song sparrow, who knows her brief and lovely life is, life is, says, sweet, sweet, sweet interlude, sweet, 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 sweet interlude. If you enter the barn, the swallows swoop down from their nests and scold, Chicky chee they say. In early summer, there are plenty of things for a child to eat and drink and suck and chew. Dandelion stems are full of milk. Clover heads are loaded with nectar. The Frigidaire, which is a refrigerator, is full of ice-cold drinks. Everywhere you look is life. Even the little ball of spit on the milk on the wheat stalk, if you poke it apart, has a green worm inside of it. And if the underside of the leaf of the potato vine are the bright orange eggs of the potato bug. It was on a day in early summer that the goose eggs hatched. This was an important event in the barn cellar. I found another answer to a question. This Oh, ex Fern was there, sitting on her stool, when it happened. Except for the goose herself, Charlotte was the first to know that the goslings had at last arrived. The goose knew a day in advance that they were coming. She could hear their weak voices crying from in calling from inside the egg. She knew that they were in a desperately cramped position inside the shell and were most anxious to break through and get out. So she sat quite still and talked less than usual. When the first gosling poked its gray-green head through the goose's feathers and looked around, Charlotte spied it and made the announcement. I am sure, she said, that every one of us here will be gratified to learn that after four weeks of unremitting effort and patience on the part of our friend the goose, she now has something to show for it. The goslings have arrived. May I offer my sincere congratulations? Thank you, thank you, thank you said the goose, nodding and bowing shamelessly. Thank you, said the gander. Congratulations, said Wilbur. How many goslings are, th are there? I can only see one. There are seven, said the goose. Fine, said Charlotte. Seven is a lucky number. Luck had nothing to do with this, said the goose. It was good management and hard work. At this point, Templeton showed his nose from his hiding place under Wilbur's trough. He glanced at Fern, then crept cautiously toward the goose, keeping close to the wall. Everyone watched him, for he was not well-liked, not trusted. 
Look, he began in a sharp voice, you say you have seven goslings? Were th there were eight eggs. What happened to the other egg? Why didn't it hatch? It's a dud, I guess, said the goose. Well, what are you going to do with it? continued Templeton, his little round, beady eyes fixed on the goose. You can have it, replied the goose. <clears throat> Roll it away and add it to that nasty collection of yours. Templeton had a habit of picking up unusual objects around the farm and storing them in his home. He saved everything. Certainly, urgently, urgently, said the gam gander. You may have the egg. But I'll tell you one thing, Templeton, if I ever catch you poking oaky noking your ugly nose around our goslings, I'll give you the worst pounding and a, a rat ever took. And a pounding just means he's going to beat him up. And the gander opened his strong wings and beat the air with them to show his power. He was strong and brave. But the truth is, both Goose and the gander were worried about Templeton. And with good reason. The rat had no morals, no conscience. No scruples, no consideration, no decency, no milk of rodent kindness, no punction, compunctions, no higher feeling, no friendliness, no anything. He would kill a gosling if he could get away with it. The goose knew that. Everybody knew that. So no morals, no scruples. That means he just really wasn't a nice person. And if something died and he killed it, boys and girls, he could care less. That's pretty much what it means. With her broad bill, the goose pushed the unhatched egg out of the nest, and the entire company watched in disgust while the rat rolled it away. Even Wilbur, who could eat almost anything, was appalled. That means he was disgusted. Imagine what a junky old rotten egg, he muttered. A rat is a rat, said Charlotte. She laughed a tinkling little laugh. But, my friends, if that ancient egg ever breaks, this barn will be untenable. What's that mean? asked Wilbur. It means nobody will be able to live here on account of the smell. A rotten egg is a regular stink bomb. I won't break it, snarled Templeton. I know what I'm doing. I handle stuff like this all the time. He disappeared into his tunnel, pushing the goose egg in front of him. He pushed and nudged till he succeeded in rolling it into his lair under the trough. That afternoon, when the wind had died down and the barnyard was quiet and warm, the gray goose led her seven goslings off the nest and out into the world. Mr. Zuckerman spied them when he came with Wilbur's supper. Well, hello there, he said, smiling all over. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven baby geese. <laughs> now isn't that lovely? And that's the end of chapter six. Next chapter is called Bad News. Ooh, that's going to be good. All right, boys and girls, to answer our questions in chapter six, let's take a look. We have list three things that happen in the summer on a farm. Well, the first thing we know, the grass is cut, right? The grass is cut because that all that grass is going to turn into what, guys? It's going to turn into hay, right? And where did they put the hay? Correct. They put it up into the barn, right? So I said at the beginning of the chapter, you're going to find all the answers to question number one. So if we go back to page 42, we know that the grass is cut in the summertime right? What about school ending, right? School ends in the summertime on a farm. So school ends and we are almost coming up to the end of our school day. Yeah, school year actually, right boys and girls? And there's so many things to do in the summertime on a farm, right? It says here that the birds are singing, that there's things to eat and things to drink and fish to catch. So on the third one here, boys and girls, you can add any one of those. Birds singing, things to eat and drink, or fish to catch. So I'm going to put right down in here, I remember the trout that was caught. So trout is caught, remember that's the fish, in the brook. 
and I'm going to add that. Of course, you can add whatever one you want. Remember to pause where you need to to catch up. How did the animals feel about Fern? Do you remember reading that? The animals felt like she was an equal, so they treated her. as an equal. She's the same to everybody, or every animal on the farm. <laughs> How often did Fern visit the farm? You were right if you said every day, let her be. And what was that important event happening in the barn cellar? You're right, it was the hatching of the goslings. those baby geese. Now remember, there was one egg that did not hatch and they called it a dud. So what do you think a dud is? A dud egg. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. A dud egg is kind of like a dead egg. Or an unhatched egg. Well, an unhatched egg that was supposed to hatch, right? Pause where you need to and catch up on number five. So a dead egg is a dead egg or an unhatched egg that was supposed to hatch. Now, here we see what Templeton did with the egg, didn't we? What did he do with it? Templeton took it to his lair. Templeton took the egg to his lair. Not liar. I know we've been practicing our spelling, but remember, it's A-I-R instead of I-A-R. Now, towards the end of the chapter, Charlotte says that if the eggs break, or the goose said if the, eggs, if the egg breaks, the dud egg, right, that the barn would be untenable. And he said it's a regular stink bomb. Gross. So what does that mean if the egg were to uh, break? Yes, untenable means, well, if the egg breaks, what is it going to smell like? It's going to smell gross, right? Do you want to live somewhere where it smells really gross? No. So untenable means it's unlivable. You cannot live there because it smells so bad. All right, boys and girls. I am going to let you finish up there. Make sure you get everything you need and pause the video where you need to to catch up on the answers for chapter six. And then on the back here is the picture to color. You may choose to color it if you like, but if you don't want to, you most certainly do not have to. Okay? All right, boys and girls, have fun with chapter six coloring and the questions, and I cannot wait to see what the bad news is in chapter seven.